Welcome to St Alfred Sea Salter and our online service today. My name's Anne and I'll be leading this service. Uh, and whether this is the first service you've been with us or whether you've been to every single one, it's lovely to see you and I hope you uh, get something out and meet God during this time. Now, I was thinking that it'd be quite nice if you want to spend a minute and go and look for a candle. It can be any type of candle, uh, obviously depending on your own situation and how safe it is for you uh, and for your family. But I've just got a little tea light in a jar, so um, I'll be using that. And if you want to join me, then do feel free. But let us start with our opening words. And if you join in with what's in bold on the screen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms and hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. So let's start. Let's, if you've got your candle, get it and light it now to remind you of God's presence through the rest of the service. And just keep it by you. Uh, to remind you of God's presence.
So as we come to our time of confession, you may wish to hold your candle as a sign of God's presence as we talk to him. So I invite you to think about things that you want to say sorry to God for. Things you may have said or thought or done uh, and things maybe you haven't done that you should have done. So join with me. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be. And that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new, new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello everyone. The readings today are Colossians 1, 15 to 20 and John 1, 1 to 14. So the first reading, Colossians 1, 15 to 20. The Supremacy of the Son of God The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things that have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile himself to all things whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This is the word of the Lord. And now to the Gospel reading, which is from John chapter 1, 1 to 14. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gave light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. He came. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of a human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. 
Good morning. We are a month into 2021 and I wonder if already any of your hopes for this year have been fulfilled. A friend of mine and, and her husband, who works well in alternate months, were hoping that he'd still be here for the date that they get their baby scan through and that he could go with her. They went together. Like many, I'm very hopeful for the vaccine that's being rolled out at the moment to provide that much needed protection and allow us to meet together safely. I'm also hoping for a cut and colour this half of the year. You might realise where I'm going with this talk, but I'm going to be talking about hope today. I saw a quote in the window of a bookshop in Harbour Street in Whitstable. It stated, communities create the condition for hope. I decided to download the book and give it a read. It has stories from the author about her experiences and practical pointers on how to help yourself to be more hopeful. In the second chapter, I realised why I was finding it so hard to grasp. This book is a secular book, and as a Christian, what I understand hope to be goes deeper than what was being explained. There were some great quotes in this book, and some of them can be related to Christians as well as non-Christians. But by reading this, it really made me think about the true hope we have from Jesus coming to this world and us committing ourselves to him. Recently, I was on a Zoom meeting for the Leading for Christ course that Joanna and Annie from church are running. And whilst I was on that, I just asked them to tell me what they thought hope meant. The words certain and sure came up multiple times. And Annie used the metaphor, believing there is sunshine behind the clouds. Knowing the passage, I just smiled to myself. If you are new to exploring the Bible and faith, Jesus is explained as the light in the darkness and the light of the world multiple times. And if you've ever had a power cut and had to scramble to find a torch or to light a candle, you will have experienced firsthand how quickly the darkness disappears. The light from a candle or a torch allows us to see more clearly. It draws our focus. It can allow us to look out over a room so that we don't trip or to shine at a fuse box so that we can see the detail. Having physical light calms us. It can help lift us. It enables us to see and I think reassures us too. It's not a sense that we are used to being without. And I don't think it's coincidence that this is the picture used to describe Jesus. He sees the big picture and the detail. The darkness in the passage refers to the world and us living in the world. The first book in the Bible, Genesis, which tells the story of creation, starts with the three words in the beginning. The same three words that are at the start of John's Gospel. John is explaining to us that Jesus was present since the beginning of creation as he is part of God the Father. When Jesus, the Son, comes to earth, he is directly bringing the word of God with him. He was there from the beginning when, dog bro when God broke the darkness for the first time and brought light. John, in this first passage, is setting the reader up to know that what he, John, and the other gospel writers wrote is God's word brought to us through Jesus' teachings. When you read the gospels, Jesus assures us of the certainty of our future through salvation. This light he talks about brings life because Jesus brings life. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. Hope is looking forward to the future. It is certain and it's unchanging. Our faith that we can start with as small as, as small as a mustard seed grows because of the certain and unchanging future hope gives us. We put our trust in him when we see darkness or clouds because the light is there behind it even when we can't see it. Hope is often written about in hymns and songs. And um, two that I have thought about when I was writing this is In Christ Alone, which says about our hope being found in Christ and that he is our light and he is our strength. And the other one is a more recent worship song called Living Hope. And I'd encourage you to go away and listen to it or read the lyrics and take a few minutes to just absorb it. But part of the chorus says, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. And we will soon be starting Lent, a time where we prepare to celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection, and how by doing this, the certainty of our future is confirmed. Thinking about that Hebrews verse I mentioned about faith, I think we sing about hope so much because it underpins our faith. 
Faith, hope and love are our foundations. We sing out about these as worship and as a declaration to God. I saw a quote recently and then I looked up who it was by and it was written by a lady called Maya Angelou. And it says, hope and fear cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Choose one to stay. Immediately I was like, this is 100% correct and I'm not inviting fear to stay, I'm inviting hope to stay. And then I had something that a little later that unsettled me. I was starting to worry. I needed to retract my 100% agreement with this quote and I deliberated. Whether we call it fear or worry or anxiety or being scared, we all experience it. I decided to retract my retracting. How flippant am I? Fear and anxiety are real. For us in many different forms and in many different le- on many different levels, this pandemic will have brought fear in all sorts of ways. Fear for our lives or our families, fear for our mental health or our ability to cope, our spiritual relationship and how will we maintain this? Financially, will I have work? Will I have money in the bank to pay for my food shopping and my bills? Fear to go to work and at the moment, at the moment, and to come home to your family afterwards. These are real fears and we need to acknowledge these. Hebrews 6.19 says, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. I think this is the other, This and the other verses and quotes I have mentioned all go deeper to that certainty we get from our loving Father who sent light to the darkness for us to see and for us to follow. So what I'm trying to say and what I hope I have said is that with faith, hope has a greater meaning. The hope of making it to someone's birthday party is a real hope. It is our intention and said with the confidence that it will happen. The hope Jesus brought and still brings goes deeper to our core, as a child of God, rooted in the identity that he gives us and the future that he promises us. We don't know this future minute by minute, but going back to using the words from one of my favourite hymns, which says, until he returns or calls me home, I live with a certainty or we live with the certainties that these will happen because of this certainty that Jesus will return. Like John, and the, uh, like John the Baptist in our passage, who came as a witness to testify the light way back when, we need to also bear witness to the light of Jesus here today in 2021. John the Baptist points the way to Jesus and then Jesus illuminates the way to God. So going forward, I've got some questions for you to ponder on. You don't have to give me the answers, it's okay, but you can just... Think, think about them on your own or maybe in your connect group. And they are, are you living in a way that is bearing witness to the hope we have found in Jesus so that others see it and want to know about it? Do we recognise the light of Jesus today? In ourselves, others, our communities, our world, try to delve a little bit deeper than the black and white yes and no. And the final one, are we living with that anchoring hope in our daily walk of faith? If it's a no, that's fine. We're all journeying journeying and we're all wrestling. But do make yourself known to Paulette, our vicar. And I know that she'll be happy to chat this through with you. And we've also got people that can pray with you or for you. So do ask. I promise I'm almost done. But to finish, I want to leave a picture with you. And it's from a few years back when I was helping out at one of Jane's Christmas holiday clubs. We made Chris Dingles with the children and Jane said that we will all light them at the end of the day because it marked the end of the holiday club. We all had our small group of children that we were in charge of and um, we needed to make sure they didn't burn themselves, they didn't singe their hair and they didn't singe anybody else's hair. It It seemed like it was going to be stressful, but we all sat in a big circle in the main hall at the Christian Centre. It was semi dark, and one, one by one, Jane went round and lit all the Chris Dingles the children were holding. It got quieter the more candles that were lit, not just from concentration, but from the atmosphere changing. The candles were drawing the children's focus, and it was a special moment that we were sharing. The children were in awe. The light got bigger the more candles that were lit, under the, until the whole circle was flickering with these Chris Dingles. The children's faces were illuminated and with all of them lit, you could see all of the corners of the auditorium from our circle in the middle. 
The light of Jesus gets bigger in us and our communities the more we live in faith. Have hope in our certain future and love like he loves us. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Oh Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to end my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your very footy began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Yes, Jesus, yours is the victory. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost his grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my living hope. Let's join together now in the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us 
with power from on high, we believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Lord, light of the world, we ask you to shine your light on our lives at this time. Bring light and life into our congregations and communities in Seasalter and within the Whitstable Team Ministry. Thank you for the development of crucial vaccines and the dedication of those involved in the vaccination process. Thank you for those who have already been vaccinated and the hope this brings. Thank you for the signs that spring is around the corner, bringing with it the hope of regaining some normality in our lives. Help us to hold on to our hope in you as we begin the season of Lent. Give us a fresh understanding of how this time, when we give things up, can help us to focus afresh on you. We ask for your protection for our families, our neighbours, our friends and our colleagues. We ask for your healing for those who are sick. Keep safe all who provide care in hospitals, surgeries and in the community as they use their skills to bring healing and support. Please comfort those who mourn. We ask for your blessing on those who are anxious and overwhelmed. May the hearts and minds of children and young people be protected. Support those currently teaching vulnerable children and the children of key workers. As schools look ahead to reopening for all pupils, we ask for your blessing on their plans as they seek to ensure that their children will thrive in safe environments. Give wisdom and patience to those who are helping their children to learn at home. Restore hope to those unable to work currently by giving them new opportunities. Strengthen those who seek to lead and serve in our locality. Renew those who are not sure they can keep going at this time. Grant us a deep sense of your peace and a confidence in your enduring love and power. Lord, we thank you for the light your word brings to our lives. We ask for that light to continue to guide us and to keep us safe. Jesus Christ, our living hope, we thank and praise you for your unfailing love. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. I've got three things to share with you this week and the first is a team notice to say that the PCC are looking for both a secretary and treasurer. 
Um, if you are interested in either of these positions or you know someone who may be, please do contact Paulette who will be able to give you more information. The second thing to mention um, and which you may have seen from this week's notices is the Banner of Hope which is being made by Diana High and will hang in Seesaw to Christian Centre once we are able to get back into the building. I would ask that you read the notice and that you prayerfully consider making a contribution towards this. If you want further information or you need help in any way, please do contact Diana and her details are in the notices. The final thing I want to mention is um, that I hope you've seen the poster that's been circulated about the Church Family Pancake Party, which is going to be held at six o'clock on Zoom on Tuesday the 16th of February, which is Shrove Tuesday. Um, this is for everyone in the church family, from the oldest to the youngest, um, to join in with. So please do put the date in your diary and contract Andrew Price for the link. Let's see how many of us can join in this event and have fun together. That's all I've got uh, for this week for you. So please do stay safe and keep connected. Bye. Hello, I just wanted to update you on our Christmas cook-along. So we had 10 families sign up. We um, provided ingredients, recipe cards and videos for them to follow to be able to learn new recipes and cook family meals. We provided 258 mains and 258 puddings in total. Um, thank you so much for those that donated financially. Um, we know that loads of people prayed about this. Um, for those that donated cooking utensils and also those that helped us with their time to just do the logistics of it. Um, we are hoping to do it again in February half term, which is two weeks away. We have got families interested. So I just wanted to update you on that and also say if you are able to pray about this and um, donate financially or any more cooking utensils, we would be really, really grateful. My contact details are in the church directory. So please do get in contact with me if you want to find out more or know how to donate. Thank you so much. I've got good news for you about our Lent course for 2021. Now, we planned to run this course as a church last year, but then COVID. But in the five weeks up to Easter, we're going to begin the prayer course. It's from the UK born but international 24-7 prayer team. And their founder, Pete Gregg, wrote this excellent book called How to Pray. And I do recommend it to you. There's lots of overlapping content between this and the course that we're going to do, but you don't actually need the book for the course. But um, if you want uh, the book to accompany the series, as it were, this is the one. Prayer is the one thing that COVID-19 can't take away from us. In fact, many I know have found that praying during this time has been an anchoring and an essential thing. And a lot of people have found they've kind of gone deeper in prayer. And whatever happens next, we need to be a praying people. So the course is eight sessions on prayer based on the Lord's Prayer. And five of those sessions will take place before Holy Week and Easter. And then we'll have the three sessions to finish afterwards. And we'll be tying in the Sunday sermons on the topics too. There'll be four main ways that you can join in with this course. You can join in if you are part of a connect group who is running it and you might like to join a connect group if you're not in one that is running it just for those weeks. You could choose to set up your own small group with a couple of friends online and use the materials if you want to do it. You could join in with the Zoom session that I'll be organising for those that aren't in other groups but who want to do it with others on Zoom. And if you live on your own and you don't have access to things online, then you will be sent paper resources and a DVD with the session videos on each week, along with a Sunday service DVD so that you can do um, the course as well, even if you can't get on to the Internet. And a little bit later on, we will make sure that you have all the details for all of those options. Now, as if that wasn't good enough already, there's a second Lent course running this year. Chris Kingley is going to be running a Lent course, particularly for the Third Ages, but it's for anyone who would like to join. The course is called Daring to See God Now, and it's a five session course covering the good news of God, the time is now, God is present, change your mind and live it.
The course will run on Zoom on Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock, starting on the 18th of February. If you're interested in that, then do contact Chris Skingley. His details are in the notice sheet and he too will send session links nearer the time. So I hope that you'll be able to join at least one of these and find them encouraging and fruitful. as we come to the end of our service I'll suggest that if you can and want to you hold your candle again um, and think of God going with you into the coming week. 
So let's just say our final words together, going out to serve God. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So that's the end of our service. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a good week in the week to come. Uh, obviously, look after yourself, stay safe, keep connected to God, keep connected to each other and take care.